Welcome back to another Titanic tour. In the last episode, we looked at the crew areas under the forecastle. Today, we'll be exploring boiler rooms 5 and 6, as well as their fiddlies and ash places. If you like this video, subscribe for more Titanic tours. Today, we'll start off in the Fireman's Tunnel, looking towards boiler room 6. This tunnel was used by the 13 leading firemen and the other 163 firemen needed to keep this massive ship moving. Titanic had 29 boilers, 25 being double-ended and the other four being single-ended. We come upon a sign that says men must break step while in tunnel. This tells the crew to walk in a certain way to avoid damaging the structure and making loud noise. This sprinkler system was used to hose this area down after a long day of men walking through here covered in coal dust. This area would get very dirty with 176 men walking through here every shift. The iceberg was able to cut the ship quite deep. The fireman's tunnel started flooding immediately. It flooded pretty rapidly which allowed water to creep up the fireman's staircase. It proceeded up the staircase and flooded all the areas we explored in the last episode. We can now enter Boiler Room 6. The doors behind us lead to the cargo holds, and the one in front of us leads to Stokehold 11 of Boiler Room 6. This room's got watertight doors and pumps for ballast water. We're now standing in Stokehold 11 of Boiler Room 6. This boiler room was closer to the bow than the rest of the boiler rooms, so they could only fit four double-ended boilers in here compared to the rest having five boilers per boiler room. These double-ended boilers weighed 91 and a half tons and were capable of holding 48 and a half tons of water. They were fed 600 tons of coal each day, which is 1.3 million pounds of coal. As we look up we see the vast network of pipes and ladders leading up to the fiddlies which we'll explore soon. All of these pipes lead up to the first funnel which is almost directly above us. Now we see one of the safety features of the boilers. If the steam pressure got too high it would pop a little piece in here which would allow steam to escape up and out the massive pipe leading up the fiddlies and the funnels. All of these would have been set off during the sinking as they were going full speed before the impact and now they were at a dead stop. Many passengers recalled a deafening noise produced by the escaping steam up on deck. We're now entering what's known as a coal bunker. 6,600 tons of coal was carried on Titanic. All of this coal would have weighed a ridiculous amount, and if it wasn't constantly trimmed by trimmers, the ship could actually develop a list from all the weight of the coal on one side. It took almost an entire day for these boilers to be brought up to full steam pressure. We're now in Stokehold 10 of Boiler Room 6. This is where leading stoker Frederick Barrett was when the iceberg pierced the side of the ship, allowing cold seawater into the boiler room. As seawater plunged into the ship, Frederick Barrett and Mr. Kesketh jumped through the closing watertight door into Stokehold 9 of Boiler Room 5. This hole in the floor is part of an ash ejection system. Ash would be put into this hole then the handle would be pulled. A jet of water would rush the ash out the side of the ship. Only if we were at sea, of course. If we were in port, we would use the ash hoist system. We'll go and check out the ash hoist system and ash ejection now. This long pipe we just climbed up is the ash ejection tube. It shoots water and ash out the side of the ship. We're now in a room called an ash place. 
This is where we would lift ash out of the bowels of the ship so that it could be dumped onto a barge while we're in port. This machine is called an ash hoist. It hauled up the ash from the boiler rooms so it could be dumped. It was steam operated. Every boiler room had two. We'll head back down into the hot bowels of the boiler rooms to explore boiler room 5. We'll now head into Boiler Room 5. This watertight door is the one Frederick Barrett jumped through when the ship was damaged. We're now in a full-sized boiler room with five double-ended boilers. Standing in stokehold number 9 of Boiler Room 5, we can see there's a bit more room in here as it's closer to the middle of the ship. Boiler Room 5 was unharmed by the iceberg damage, but the coal bunker wasn't so lucky. Frederick Barrett recalls hearing water pouring into the coal bunker of Boiler Room 5. This is Stokehold 8 of Boiler Room 5. Much like the other stoke holds, it has an ash ejection system and three furnaces per side on each boiler. We can now see down into boiler rooms 4, 3, 2, and 1. The firemen would walk through all these stoke holds to get to their spot. The reciprocating engine room and the turbine engine room were also down this passageway. Now we'll go up and explore the fiddlies. These black vents are a part of the smoke ejection system. They all connect up to the funnels up above us. We're now inside what's called a fiddly. These were used to get light and fresh air down into the bowels of the ship. All these pipes are connected to the funnels and are for venting extra steam or for sounding the steam whistle. As you can see through the fiddly grates were right under the first funnel. We're now inside of the boiler casing. This massive black cylinder is actually the base of the first funnel. When we look down, we can see all the way to the tank top where the boilers are.
We're now in Boiler Room 6 Fiddly. As we look up, we can see the massive funnel and its massive steam whistles connected to them. We'll head back down into the heat of Boiler Room 6, number 11, Stokehold, where we started our tour. Here we are back in Stokehold 11 of Boiler Room 6. The sheer scale of the machinery needed to power a ship of this size must have been awe-inspiring to the people of her time. They must have felt like they were truly living in the future. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe so you can see the next episode of Titanic Tours. We'll have a look at the reciprocating engine room and turbine engine room in depth. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and see you in the next Titanic Tours.